series of high profile fires occurring nationally and it was two factors. One, the uh, volume and size of some of the incidents, but secondly it was about the fact that a number of those incidents were also have been reoccurring fires uh, and then the kind of tipping point for the waste working group was the incident at Smedic in the West Midlands. Uh, that became the tipping point from a number of factors the size of that particular incident, the cost of the community, the cost of the fire and rescue service, uh, and perhaps most notably the fact that there was firefighter injuries. The upshot of that was you know, it recognised just how much it was costing the fire service to deal with these incidents. Right. Then the other thing was that we'd, well, the it was a tipping point. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we'd been, certainly been discussing sort of solutions and looking at guidance before Smedic. Um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a new problem. I think it, sort of the momentum we've been building and so I think it just just tipped the appetite and got the political interest as well. The Chief Fire Officers Association decided that there was a, needed to be a, a discussion, a debate, a collaborative approach, uh, and really from that they wanted to involve a number of, of wider stakeholders in one big uh, seminar. So that was the Fire Futures Forum. It was a day long debate where the background was discussed uh, and a roadmap was uh, uh, worked up to solve or work towards a, s a solution for the problem of uh, significant waste fires. I, I don't necessarily think it was a more stringent regulatory regime. I think, um, obviously Mark's alluded to, it was higher profile, we're having a number of these fires. I think the targets possibly are that more waste is just being recycled, so the hazard is increasing, if, if not the risk. You know, you, you've got more waste being stored, more um, sites having permits. So I think the likelihood of the fires um, was obviously increasing and the size of these some of these sites is obviously quite substantial, so the potential for very large fires. Um, so, so I think that's the principal driver, that there is just basically more waste being recycled. The product that they produce uh, has an inherent value uh, and in, if we talk about RDF for a moment, that inherent value uh, is part of them being able to export that to a number of European countries. Now, of course, seasonality and the economy means there's a fluctuation in the value of that product. Uh, and if there's a particular, we've been through a particular period where that product is deflated, then there's a, a there's a reason for that operator stockpiling that product until the price increases. And so, this kind of phenomenon of huge amounts of of, of product being stockpiled uh, is something that we've not certainly come across. Uh, uh, in previous years. So the traditional way waste is recycled, recycled and moved on has kind of slightly changed and we are seeing these huge stockpiles of, of, yeah. of highly flammable product uh, that really we are as a fire and rescue service and as the environment agency catching up with in terms of the appropriate intervention. The, the actual numbers of incidents though, it has stayed remarkably consistent. I think um, you know, it's partly because it's the profile and the size of perhaps one or two of them. But um, you know, over the last 10 years, the number has averaged around 300 mm -hmm. and around 15, 20 sort of serious incidents in the year. It's one of those yeah. situations where the actual data yeah. doesn't reflect the perception. The poor management on site is undoubtedly a contributory factor. There's always a cause and effect for any fire, and particularly wayside fires. And we find that things, really key things like separation distances, uh, access for fire service, um, uh, water supplies, uh, protection, water protection, uh, just frankly are not adequate. We have to be aware that there are obviously some rogue elements within the industry as well um, that aren't probably ever going to comply or aren't likely to comply um, and um, who are you know, either deliberately or just by bad management having fires on their side. I think there is guidance out there um, but it's not necessarily always been in one place um, and there are gaps, and you know that's part we're working at the moment with uh, uh, waste industry to try and sort of sort of fill in those gaps. The Fire Futures Forum, in terms of the stakeholders that were there, uh, an action plan or a route map was discussed on the day, uh, and there was one or two key objectives that came from it, uh, and the primary one was the establishment formally of the CFA Waste Working Group. From the working group, uh, the two key. Uh, um, objectives have been around better prevention uh, and that's around uh, getting a formal memorandum of understanding or a service level agreement between the regulators. Uh, 
and an underlying code of practice to give clearer, more transparent guidance on, for both the operators and regulators on how to manage the site and how to produce an effective uh, action, uh, site action plan. So we're going to work towards better data sharing so that there's better statistics about where these fires are happening, why they're happening, how often they're happening, uh, which parts of the country. The other product that's come out of it is a report and that report has been uh, published on the CFOA uh, website and is publicly available. I think the last tangible bit we're producing is the Memorandum of Understanding, but that will be around uh, better joined up work in particularly between the fire service and the EA, um, so, that, so that site operators can expect in the future uh, a, a, a more collaborative response. Bruce rightly pointed out earlier there was plenty of bits of guidance. What regulators and operators were uh, needed was a, a, a one location, a one-stop shop for uh, going to, in terms of reference, as to some of the key principles of, of fire safety management at a site. And we feel that the WISH guidance uh, provides that to some degree. Uh, it's, it's not yet perfect uh, and obviously we are about to launch that product for console, wider consultation uh, where we really urge anybody that uh, is uh, looking at the website or reading the uh, article that they seek that uh, consultation out. That is really their golden opportunity to contribute some value to what they would see as, as the right balance between regulation and operation. We are trying to learn lessons from each of those incidents that we attend and I think probably the most significant change of direction in terms of our firefighting tactics is a much better working with the EA and recognition that actually in some cases our firefighting tactics can cause a detrimental effect on the environment and an obvious one would be uh, waste firefighting water but what we've seen uh, experience of this year is something called accelerated burn so we've introduced this um, uh, accelerated burn tactic where we've introduced uh, positive pressure ventilation fans, so, so these are metre high, metre wide uh, uh, diesel run fans that can pump a large volume of air onto the fire and obviously increase the, accelerate the rate which it burns, which A uh, means that the products burn more cleanly, so there's a reduced impact on the environment in the air, uh, and burns the product through more quickly, which uh, allows the business to potentially clear up, open up and get back on their feet. It's worth pointing out, isn't it, that sometimes water isn't particularly effective on fighting these fires, particularly where the sort of finer grain materials where you almost get a sort of a initial flare and then a sort of a, a coolish surface with the water sort of literally we just find running off and water and foam have been used to not, to not a lot of effect sometimes mm -hmm. and actually sometimes they've actually brought down things like the smoke plume, Increase the amount of particulates in the fire, so it actually made a, 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 from an environmental point of view and an air pollution point of view, it actually made it worse. There are some fires that are um, uh, beyond the capacity of the fire service to attend, and our fire service response is not built around 40 pump incidents. That's where we don't see the sense in you know poor management. It's a, it's a poor business decision to not consider fire safety management because these fires do and will happen. These sites are a great hazard because effectively waste is highly combustible material uh, and you know, statistics tell us it's a matter of time before uh, a site is affected by a fire. The level of risk management on that uh, site uh, will, will directly correlate to the outcome.